Although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. When I was in first year college, I remember learning two important Greek words in my subject in classical Greek literature from the American Jesuit, Father Joseph Galdon S.J., one of my favorite teachers. The words were hubris and nemesis. Roughly, their equivalent terms in English would be pride or arrogance and downfall on the other hand. I also learned how these two words are related to each other. You know, in Greek mythology, hubris referred to excessive pride, sobrang yabang, that supposedly offends the gods and is the common reason for the downfall of many people. It was portrayed as a character defect in human beings. Every human being was supposedly susceptible to this disease. On the other hand, Nemesis stood for a mythological deity, the god of retribution, the one who is ready to strike down yung mayayabang, those who are supposedly afflicted with hubris. In the Bible, we hear about the interrelatedness of hubris and nemesis. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction and arrogance goes before a fall. The best example of this in Judeo-Christian tradition is supposedly the sin of Satan, ang kasalanan ni Satanas, which led to this downfall. Even in the Quran of the Muslims, which are actually so closely related to the Judeo-Christian scriptures, we find a similar reference to the sin of Satan. Although Satan was created ahead of Adam, he was supposedly commanded by God to bow in reverence before Adam. But Satan, we are told, refused. Refused to do so because he felt it was his, below his dignity. By then, he had been corrupted by the thought that he was a more dignified creature than human beings. So why should he bow before them? This sin of pride apparently had caused the downfall of Satan. From then on, ginawa niyang mission, yung pabagsaki ng tao, to cause human beings to fall, just to prove his point with God. And how would he do it? By tempting human beings to imitate him, to behave like him. That like Satan, we also become wise in our own estimation so that eventually we experience our downfall. Well, this seems to be the main theme of our readings today, namely, that the most common pitfall of human knowledge is the tendency to develop arrogance and conceit, to think of ourselves as self-sufficient, as wiser than God. And ironically, it is when we become excessively proud about our human intelligence that we actually become stupid and find ourselves on the path of self-destruction. St. Paul expresses this very well in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. And there he is quoting Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the learning of the learned I will set aside. And if you keep reading until verse 16, of this chapter, we hear the prophet saying, 
your stupidity is as though the potter were taken to be clay, as though what is made should say of its maker, I have nothing to do with him. Or the vessel should say of the potter, he does not understand. Arrogance, kayabangan ang tawag dito. This is the same tone of arrogance that we hear in our first reading about the king of Assyria who does not realize that he was merely being used by God as an instrument to punish Israel. He became so wise, so proud in his own estimation. Sa Tagalog, ang tawag natin sa ganito, lumalaki ang ulo. The head has gotten so puffed up. What would God do to teach the Assyrians a lesson? Well, He would make them suffer a terrible humiliation. They became so overconfident after their success in conquering Samaria and Damascus, they thought it was going to be just as easy to conquer Jerusalem. Suddenly, alam nyo nangyari? Tinamaan sila ng epidemic. They were struck by a plague just when they were ready to take over Jerusalem. They were forced to retreat, not because of any military miscalculation, but because of an epidemic. You know, I had goosebumps while reading this little detail in the history of the siege of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. God really has a, has a way of making the arrogant eat the dust. The same way that he struck down Saul, who was persecuting the Christians on his way to Damascus. Isn't this exactly what we are now experiencing with the COVID-19? We have already sent human beings to the moon. We are already replacing human workers with robots. And lately, I hear that the United States and China and the United Arab Emirates are already sending people to do a space exploration in Mars. And yet, we still do not know how to deal with COVID-19. In spite of all the scientific and theological advances, we are totally helpless, made helpless, by a microscopic virus that has already infected more than 13 million, around, sorry, more than, yeah, that's right, 13 million around the world in just seven months and has killed half a million so far despite the lockdown. And if this virus mutates into something even more deadly, who of us will survive this? It has shut down the, economy, the economies of almost all the nations around the world and has forced us to live like rats para tayong mga daga sa ating mga lungga. Did you get to see that meme that is going around in the social media? It says, 2020 is really the year of the rats. We are all in hiding. We only go out to get food. And we store the food to eat later. And when people come close to us, we run away. Imagine, super intelligent creatures called human beings suddenly behaving like rats. Totoo nga, what follows hubris is nemesis. 
This has never been more true than now. We have forgotten that we are actually latecomers in the evolution process. That before we populated the planet Earth, well, the world was populated by dinosaurs. They were such huge creatures. But what happened to them? One strike of an asteroid and the Earth's climate suddenly changed and the Ice Age was triggered so that the whole species of dinosaurs was wiped out and went extinct. Now, you don't think that that kind of thing can happen also with human beings? One little virus can wipe us out. One little stupid nuclear war among ourselves can change the climate of the whole planet and trigger a total reconfiguration of the planet Earth minus human beings. Kaya I suggest, pakibasa niyo ho ang Salmo 90, Psalm number 90, and take its reminder very seriously. The Psalm says, you turn humanity back into dust and you say, return, O children of Adam, a thousand years in your eyes are merely a day gone by. Before a watch passes in the night, you wash them away. They sleep and in the morning they sprout again like grass. In the morning, it blooms only to pass away. In the evening, it is wilted and withered. Our life is like a sigh, over like a sigh. Ganda sa Tagalog, ang buhay natin, parang buntong hininga lamang. Seventy is the sum of our years, or eighty if we are strong, and most of them are fruitless toil. They pass quickly, and we are gone. And in the end, the psalm says, Teach us, O Lord, to number our days aright, so that we may gain wisdom of heart. I'd like to believe that this is the kind of wisdom that Jesus in our gospel is speaking about. It is not all really about human knowledge of the clever and the learned that often leads to pride and arrogance. St. Paul says it so well in 1 Corinthians 1, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the wisdom that Jesus says God has revealed to the childlike. Again, St. Paul rubs it in when he says, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and the despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something. I am therefore not surprised that the truly great people in this world are the ones who do not regard themselves too highly. Those who, to borrow the words of the prophet, Proverbs, are not wise in their own estimation. Sabi nila, Homo sapiens, the human species, survived and predominated the world kasi daw matatalino tayo because of our intelligence. The dinosaur, they went extinct. They say it was because they had a huge body but very small brain. Ewan ko lang kung totoo yun. We managed to replace the dinosaurs, they say, because we have larger brains. 
Dahil daw marunong tayo. We're capable of knowing. But have we forgotten that it is also our big and hyperactive brains that have made us so clever that we exploit and abuse the world and its resources beyond restoration? Or we fight each other and design weapons for destruction for the Earth's ultimate decimation. Sorry for this extended reflection, but I would like to emphasize that we are superior as a species, not because of our brains. It is Satan who deluded us into believing that our big brains are the key to survival. No, no. The real key to survival as a human species are our big hearts. It is rather our capacity to care and to express compassion for each other. Our capacity to love unconditionally. This is what makes the human species truly strong. Our true instinct is not to kill. Huwag kayong maniniwala sa kill, kill, kill. Our real instinct is not to destroy, but to be ready to die for each other and to offer our lives for each other. We were endowed with a big heart so that we can accommodate each other, so that we can build families and communities and societies in which the rule is not survival of the fittest, but the survival of the weakest. And the image of the highest form of evolution that we can ever reach as human beings is no other than Jesus, the new Adam, the new humanity that reflects divinity. <laughs>